Hi, well, I'm going to talk a little about working in distributed environments, how to synchronize, how to replicate Triton. Um, first of all, there is no one magic solution for this. There are different scenarios, different needs. So first we can talk a, a little about what we have right now with Postgres, what solutions we have. Since version 9, we have the long way the replication in Postgres. The streaming replication works with the wall. It means that the logs are shipped, are sent to the slaves. Every change that you do in your master are sent to the slaves. It duplicates everything. So you have a, a copy. It's good for failover. And even, I think, since version 9.1, you can make read-only queries to the slaves. So you can even do some kind of load balancing with Postgres to do the, the reports or, or that kind of stuff. Another kind of, of replication is the, the, the trigger one. This is more flexible in, because you can configure what you want to <coughs> replicate, maybe some tables, and even you can use different Postgres versions, different version of the operating system. In the first one, in the Postgres uh, streaming replication, doesn't doesn't work. You have to you need the same Postgres version and operating system, but in with with applications like Slowly for master slaves or or Bucardo, and you can configure some tables, do some parameterization, and and then it, it will create the triggers, and every time you do some record update insert or some operation, it will. And copy the operation to the table, and the table then gets copied to the to the slave or the master. There are other options. Symmetric DS is an open source software to do multi-master replication written in Java, and it's not only for Postgres. It works with a lot of database management systems, commercial even. Another project is Golkong, it's a Python application. It's a Q-based replication, but I think this project is it's not going it's not maintaining right now. I think since two thousand and nine you get no no new commits. So this is basically but what we have, different kinds of of systems that we can use to, to make the the replication, the, the synchronization at database level. Um, but what about synchronizing at Triton level? In the first conference, Maximilian <coughs> showed us uh, the synchronized module. The <coughs> He made for the point of sale client, and it worked with in and out direction. Uses the timestamp to determine um, the records that are changed and replicate. It works with Triton translations, and you can do XML configurations to create. For example, I want to to replicate the products, I want to replicate the accounts, you can configure all of that in XML and you can upload that XML and, and it, it will work. Send and push and pull information. It works, it is uh, it is what's written for Python 2.4 but right now he sent me an active record patch and and I think we are going to to push um, to Triton to update to Triton 3.0. 
This is a, a screenshot of how can you, you can select a module and configure what fields you want to replicate. Um, here in the bottom goes the mappings because it takes care of the of the many the relations, the model relations. If you if you get a new ID on the other on the other server, it will store the mapping. It it works well at, at that level. But as Luis told recently, uh, now we have the Jamaica scenario, and we need the unique unique patient ID. So Luis already, already told we we have four areas in Jamaica that will replicate to the Ministry of Health and the primary health centers <coughs> to the main hospital of every area. So what we also need is that when when we when we create some record, for example in a in a health center, automatically get stored in the Ministry of Health and when we do every group, create, read, update, delete, update, um, it was synchronized. And also what we need is to to call to can call the these methods in custom moments. For example a mo uh, a button that can call and synchronize at this moment. Uh, a wizard. <coughs> we need something more more generic. So this is what we have now, and um, what I want from you guys is to share uh, um, what do you thought about about this, about what comes in your mind about how we can achieve this, the replication in Jamaica. Um, you know. No, you are the experts. Also, <laughs> you, you did uh, imagine uh, uh, a block device uh, replication. Block device replication. Sorry. A block device replication. Uh huh. Like uh, at, at, yes. At the, uh, operating system level. Ah, okay, okay. Like the DB. Maybe. But I think the the. It is important also to take care of the, the Triton level because of the of the access rules, the the translations. There are so many things that uh, it's it's important to take care about and work also at the Triton level. Yeah. Yes, and you create a patient here. And the ID is not going to be the same as the patient in the Ministry of Health because you create a patient in one health center, you create another patient in another health center, both get replicated to the Ministry of Health with different IDs, and you need something that take take care of all of this mapping of IDs. Um, it's, it's not that we work replicated at database level. We need some more complex. Mm -hmm solution for this. Uh, one issue I, I see when you just figure out to create right a box if it doesn't succeed. If you cannot write on the database. Yeah. Well, and and, and it's that? slow, I think. Yes, is, if it is at, at Triton level, we, we will know that it, it get, doesn't so succeed the, the, the yeah, but, uh, okay so the other way it succeed to send to the server but it failed on your local server you, you start two transactions and one can succeed but, but in fact if you succeed remotely you don't have to write locally uh, we have if it fails locally when, when the patient comes Later. to your office because, because it's useless if you have it uh, online either he comes <laughs> with the ID card, that means that he or she is already registered, 
and then the only thing that you have to do is do still create the new encounter locally in your database, and then it checks whether the connection is alive, goes and tries it, so update, it, it updates only certain modules and certain things. Um, now imagine that the connection is down for whatever reason, it will keep the information locally until that, until that link is up, and then the same synchronization process will go to the database, to the master database, and try to do it. Uh, the fashion also goes to the other user and two doctor uh, change something and the same field from value, I don't know. But you, have, but you always have the creation and modification based on those uh, on each uh, record. The encounters are unique, so even if it's a We have for one for one side you we have an ID generated with a sequence, a special sequence, and every time we create a new patient we must query to the Ministry of Health to get that that sugar sequence, I think. Uh, you can use the uh, generate numbers that will only be generated on one place. Yes. And so uh, for the simple stuff for two centers, one take the odd numbers and the other is not, but you can make it for Yes. What I don't understand is why you won't uh, synchronize at uh, at crude level. I mean, if you if it's online, if it's synchronized, why do you want to replicate? Uh, the idea is not to be on the you know, okay. the the health centers will work with the local. A local you, that you should be able to work offline. Yes. Okay, yes, so because the, 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 the communications in, in Jamaica are not so stable. Oh, it's, to it's, even if, it, <coughs> if they were, it would be normal. But to yes. Can I just point <coughs> the validity of having to allocate the ID before treating the patient? Because if, if you have a, a system that's temporarily offline, you can treat the patient, you can record the data and allocate the national registration ID after the fact. If you're using the patient ID as a primary key in the no, system, no, no, no. that would be an error. It's, it's not a primary key in the, in the system. If it's not a primary key, then you can allocate the ID afterwards when the system comes back online. Well, the, the ID that we are talking about is the person ID. It means that you don't necessarily have to be a patient to have that number. So, the idea is people will get this number, even by mail, they can get a card with all the demographics, they can update it, and if they never got it and they go for the first time, they will get the first, ask the person. Then you can do, you know, primary care things, preventive medicine, or whatever you want to, before that person becomes a patient. Yeah. So that number is not only for patients, it's also for doctors, it's for every single being <coughs> in Jamaica. Then you can have a unique patient ID, and now we're talking about when you become a patient, as per center with a sequence, and, and as the you can do some suffix that makes it specific for that, or even if you have that person ID, can perfectly fit for also the clinical history. So you will get rid of one idea. What we do for the cystic fibrosis database is we pre-generate the global set of, of numbers and we allocate a random subset to each local database. So the allocations from the local database to give the number. But 
I don't see the necessity to do that. I don't see the. I think we're mixing issues here, where we're mixing database level replication and the number allocation system. I think that you could treat the patient and allocate the number when the allocation service is available again. And is, do we get an allocation number for an encounter, for a prescription? And all of those will be linked to that person ID. Mm -hmm. So the thing that is going to link those medical acts that I have been doing to this person are going to be linked primarily by that person ID that I have. And then that information, in order to me making sure that that person, whenever he goes in, or wherever he goes in Jamaica, has updated clinical record, that information has to go to the hospital. Sure, but the system has to be <coughs> fine for that data to be communicated to other centers anyway. So it has to be back in my, online. Or in my note, we, if, if it's not, if it's offline at the moment, that information remains at yeah. that local hospital. Yeah. When the link becomes up again, mm -hmm. that information will go yeah. to the master health yeah. Now, it can happen that he, the communication line is down for a long time, and then that information can be given to the card that the patient has that we should be able to fit their the latest encounter that they have. So imagine that the communication is down and he already or she already has the card. In that card you have the clinical history. Yeah. So we go with that to the other center. Yeah. They already have the ID. You swipe it and you will update it locally again. That's in the case that the communication is out. So you will have that like a sort of a backup. Yeah. For, uh, for the communication, if it's down, if it's up, you don't need that. You will have the master record already <coughs> updated with the latest encounters, with the latest prescriptions. Yeah. Uh, what if someone has a card, they've been assigned an ID, they show up at a hospital without their ID, for whatever reason, it's at home, they lost it, uh, you don't want to take a new record. Do you make some temporary setup until you can find what their number was? Or, or well, in that case, it's either if he's conscious or he's somebody and say, well, I am whatever. And he remembers one of the IDs. Remember, you, have, you can have the national ID, you can have the passport number, or whatever. We can retrieve you by other people. So if you exist, you put it now. If you're unconscious, you put it as an NN, and then later on, you will be that clinical data will be updated to uh, but How would you update this card? Let's say he's conscious, you find him on the computer, but uh, you also want the card to always be updated. You just wait for the next time that card comes to a medical center and then Oh, you're updated. saying that he doesn't he doesn't, he doesn't have come. It, he, Oh, he comes to hospital without well, his card. Well, the information is already updated, so he can come tomorrow and the same process of saving that information on the clinic that he goes, he can do it the same morning. The information of passing what I have on my local database to the patient card it doesn't really have to be at the same moment. No, but it sounds like it should be as important as, as for any other replication, that every source of information should be as up to date as possible. Yeah, but if he doesn't bring it, it's a matter of, you know, Either you tell him go home and bring it back, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, it, it's more of a mechanical part here where it was. I mean, education is, of course, patient education, and like having to do your ID. You forget it at the moment, they take you uh, to go and identify the streets. Will there be something built in the next time that card comes to an updated center that if it was quite to be read, it will automatically be updated if it's found that the card is out of date? Well, yeah, the moment that you do the uh, download or export of that information, it will update your card because it will already have the latest information. No matter, say, you, you kept it at home for 15 days, then you come with it and you went 14 days. To another place, you put it, and if the master 
record has been updated, then you should delegate it. Now, if the master record hasn't been updated, and you go to a particular cell center, then it might be an out of synchronization issue. But those are rare cases. We have to take them into consideration, of course. But I don't see that complicated the part of downloading. It's like the agent seven. You know, if you generate the message, you might generate an agent seven message, or you might generate an XML or whatever you want that goes into that task. And that is one operation. You put it there and it's updated. It doesn't even have to do a synchronization to see, okay, what do I have and what Just is overrides. the delta? So that overrides because it's supposed to have the latest. I don't know exactly if I understand it, uh, but uh, for me it sounds not good to have <coughs> synchronization on CRUE. So when you make uh, CRUE, you already do a uh, database connection. So maybe the problem is on the database. But um, for me, it, it is not good to, to have six point in time or uh, an incident where, where you make a uh, synchronization because it, it could be every time that there is no internet connection available. So um, maybe it's much better to have some communication process between uh, two uh, clinics uh, with an uh, additional protocol like that like AMPQ or something like this. Yeah. This is uh, the Java, Java, Java. Just send message. Yeah. I have updated this, I added this information and you queue it <coughs> and process But you say that you broadcast from that to the other health centers that are around? No. It, it sounds to me that if you have a, a, a master record where you have all the information on that and you keep that <coughs> master database updated, it looks simpler. Yeah, you can send all the message to the same. Yeah, yeah, no, no that, I think that we're talking the same. If, if we do it at that high level, where you go check, you do a ping, you check what was the latest say encounter, okay? What was my latest encounter locally? If that one is newer, then bring it back here. And then I do the encounter, and then synchronize to the other. It, it's like a closing. But, but you do it at a, at, at a high level. There's something I think I, I, I'm not really understanding there. I mean, you really need to have every information synchronized without a reliable internet connection. I mean, that's not achievable. <laughs> no, no, we're Never. saying yeah. that you have to have certain models that <coughs> to be um, convert in one place. Because if we don't have a conversion process, the unique ID concept goes nowhere. So the, the real issue here, maybe, how to merge the information from the different health uh, centers or whatever. Yes. Into that master database. I see, so you don't have the use case where the patient goes to a health center and when goes to another one, the other health center really needs to have, for example, her, his history updated. And we have it if, if the connection is this or yeah, but I mean, I mean, he goes to the other health center, and let's assume that the first health center has uh, has the internet connection down for, for example, a week. But the information is already in the card. <coughs> so you have another source of information that's the card. The patient ID has to. That's something that the Ministry of Health is going to deliver to everybody. So, mostly everybody when you go to the, the doctor, you will bring mm -hmm. that. You will not only go to the encounter, but you will have your information card updated. Now, if you don't have communication lines, then your health card will have that updated with the latest encounter. But even if you don't have it, your, your communication card, your uh, ID card, but you have the communication line on it, that's the first. That's the first uh, source. Of it. If you don't have it, then you always have your uh, idea. I guess it's 
kind of best of all. If, if, I mean, it's it, something it, that we have, have to establish a hierarchy of, of what's the, of where's the good information or the reliable information. Supposing the only, the, the only problem I'm, I'm seeing the here, communication. The, 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 the worst problem I'm seeing here is that, that really, uh, without reliable internet connections, you're really going to have a problem there. Exactly. No, no, no. I'm not saying uh, that is. Could, could we finish here? We, uh, we are very late, okay? We should have already started the try to uh, foundation meeting, and still we will still miss one talk. So <laughs> let me just ten seconds because probably the, the whole concept is the reliable connection. Jamie is going to put the fiber optic connection between these hospitals, the reference hospitals. That is supposed to be reliable. Actually, they were thinking synchronizing all these centers. What is not that reliable is the primary care centers that will have clients, they don't have, they won't have uh, databases on those primary care centers. They will connect to these places. Now, that ring that they are actually doing now is supposed to be reliable, but you can always break it. Uh, and then you have this, it's not accessory, but you have this sort of duplication in a media, in physical media. But there is a lot to talk and to optimize. <coughs> 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 Thank you.